So sticking with our silver sulfate solubility here, let me ask you a question. Is the amount or mass of silver sulfate that you can dissolve in one liter of stuff, is it different whether if that liter of solvent is pure water, like it was in the first example, or let's say a solution that's already 10th molar in sodium sulfate. So a couple things to know about sodium sulfate. This is an important choice because Being a sodium salt, um, and from the rules that we gave you last semester, you should recognize this as being what we called a soluble salt. And what that means is that you can consider it to have its KSP to be very, very, very large, much larger than one. So you can, you can assume that its dissociation goes to completion, much like um, you can assume that the ionization of, let's say, strong acids also goes to completion. So what does this mean for us? So again, sodium sulfate is, you can assume, complete dissociation. And the other thing to note is that both of these have sulfate in them. And that in this case, one can assume that because it's a strong, because it's a soluble salt, that all of this will dissolve. And so that you can assume that the initial concentration of sulfate in the solution is going to be a tenth molar. So let's go back to the ice table. So silver sulfate initial. So we initially have no silver, but we have tenth molar sulfate. Concentration changes. So again, because we are completely devoid of the silver, you can assume at least some forward progress of this reaction. I'm increasing adding to the sulfate by x molar. And at equilibrium, that would give us 0.1 plus x molar sulfate. On the silver side, um, the concentration change is gonna be twice what the silver was giving you a total of 2x molar silver. So what, is this, what does this expression look like now? So KSP is still silver concentration squared times sulfate. So that's gonna be 2x squared times the quantity 0.1 plus x. And we can probably make an assumption here that this 0.1 plus x is pretty close to just 0.1. Again, not much of it dissolved. It's not going to change its value by more than 5%. So we can do that, which makes the algebra quite a bit easier. So that means that 0.4x is equal to KSP, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 5. That gives us an x of 6.1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Now, here is a problem. We, cannot, we can no longer define the solubility of the silver sulfate in this example in terms of the sulfate concentration because it's not all coming from the silver sulfate like it was before. Now, it's important to know that as far as this equilibrium goes, it doesn't care whether it is a sodium sulfate sulfate or a silver sulfate sulfate. Sulfate is sulfate. Um, but again, most of this is going to come from the sodium sulfate, so you don't want to define the solubility in terms of the sulfate. So you have to do it in terms of the silver because still the only place the silver came from is this dissociation. But you have to make one slight addition to it that the solubility of the stuff has to be defined as half of the silver concentration because for every mole of silver sulfate that dissolves, we get two moles of the silver ions. And if you do that, um, one half of 2x is x, which means that in this case, we are dissolving 6.1 times 10 to the negative three moles of silver sulfate per liter in this 10th molar 
sodium sulfate solution. Now compare this to the solubility in pure water. And there we figure out the solubility was 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 molar. So the silver sulfate is 40 times less soluble in the 10th molar silver sulfate solution than it is in pure water. And why is that? Well, because you've got this additional sulfate pushing this equilibrium back to the left or to the product side. This is called the common ion effect. And so that when you get an ion common to two solubility systems, it tends to reduce the solubility of the, the salts involved in that. And this is a you know example of that. 